So this is us. This is what we do. And uh, the last few years, Cameron and I have been challenging ourselves to see just how far we can go on nothing more than muscle power. But more than that, we've been challenging ourselves to figure out exactly what we love to do and how we can turn that into a career. So today we want to talk to you about challenge. We want to talk to you about why challenge is important in all aspects of your life. And whether it's personal or technological, challenge drives discovery. As you are reaching the point in life where you need to choose your own direction and set your own goals, it's really important to know how to set a good challenge in order to bring out and then be at your best. The most important aspect of any given challenge is that it be difficult, but within reach. Your abilities need to equal that challenge. The Snowbird human-powered ornithopter was a good example of this. And we knew this project would be difficult, uh, and there were even people who said that it would be impossible and could never happen. Oops. We had behind us, though, 30 years of accumulated research in flap and wing flight from a lab that was a world leader in this area. In addition, people, our heroes actually, had just conquered a few years ago the problem of human-powered flight. This was a huge obstacle in and of itself. We knew that it was within our capabilities to synthesize these two technologies. And as John F. Kennedy said, we do these things not because they're easy, but because they are hard. And it's by taking on challenge that we take the impossible and make it possible. So let's start with something concrete. Challenge will always drive technological discovery. Every day, industries are challenging themselves to come up with things that are lighter, faster, more efficient. And slowly, these incremental steps are transforming the world around us. But what happens when we dream up even bigger challenges? In 1996, the X Prize was founded for the first private vessel to reach the edge of space. This drove 26 teams from around the world to come up with more affordable, more efficient spacecraft. And in the end, this spur spawned an entirely new industry of commercial spaceflight. This is where things get interesting. When we're not addressing a direct commercial need, but rather we're recognizing the need to discover. So let's take this one step further. In 1959, uh, the Royal Aeronautical Society set up a prize for the first human-powered aircraft, first workable human-powered aircraft. And this is a prize with no direct commercial intent. What happened upon this development took 18 years for anyone to win this prize, and what came out of it was an aircraft that was incredibly light, unbelievably efficient, literally just looked like it was floating on the air effortlessly. The same team went on to develop, using the same technology, the first solar-powered aircraft, which was eventually developed into this, an aircraft designed to fly non-stop, day and night, using nothing more than the power of the sun. And the point here is that a challenge doesn't necessarily have to have an immediate application. We don't know what we don't yet know. But when we take on a worthy challenge, we are bound to find out something, and there's definitely a tangible benefit. So we have, from our own experience, a recipe or roadmap of how you can take on not only technological challenge, but any challenge in your life, whether it's creative or design or social. And it starts with doing your homework. And your parents didn't pay us to come in and say this. We're not doing their job for them. We realize that it's important when you're starting out to equip yourself with the tools and the knowledge to go talk to experts in the field and to figure out how you can avoid reinventing the wheel, because somebody's already done that. When we started on the Ornithopter project, we went on a road trip to see all of the human-powered aircraft that we could and talk to, again, the experts and our heroes in this field face to face. We went and we were pulling historical objects out of museum archives and getting our greasy fingers all over them to really gain a sense of what it took to succeed in this endeavor. So once you have the necessary tools, you need to free yourself from the unnecessary constraints. You can take your newfound knowledge and those tools at your disposal further by pushing back on the boundaries and reframing the problem that have maybe held other people back before. When we undertook the human-powered helicopter project, 
we had done the math and the analysis said that a helicopter to succeed here had to be absurdly large in order to be efficient enough for its human pilot. But historically, people had built their aircraft to fly inside the nearest convenient gym. But for 30 years, this hadn't really been working out. So we decided to build Atlas as big as was necessary and then figure out where to fly it afterwards. It ended up being twice as big as anything that had come before. It was 160 feet across, which is bigger than most commercial aircraft, but it weighed only 120 pounds. So once you've built something, you need to realize that failure is going to be a necessary part of success. You've built it, now you're going to test it, and very likely you will break it. When you've constructed this thing, you're really only partway there to understanding it. And in testing the human-powered helicopter, we had innumerable rotor brakes, crashes, lots of fixing to do. And twice, we were only inches away from success when the whole helicopter came crashing down in a devastating breakup. Sometimes, it's hard to pick up the pieces, the millions of little ones, after a crash like this. But it's important to realize that, again, everything is recoverable, no matter how bad it looks. And at worst, you have to start again from the beginning, but you've already been there. It's important to know that in order to overcome these kinds of crashes and setbacks, we knew that the goal... Yeah. We knew that the goal was within reach, and we also had the passion to drive and overcome each of these obstacles. And that's really the only sufficient motivator. It's not going to be your paycheck or the prospect of fame and glory, just passion. So we know that to take on the biggest challenge in our lives, we have to have passion. But finding our passion is a challenge in and of itself. So we want to take this idea of challenge. Let me just get the next slide up. We want to take this idea of challenge um, beyond simply technological challenge. When you challenge yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually, you allow yourself to discover your passion. And it may take trying a lot of different things. So this is me growing up. For as long as I can remember, I was interested in making movies and animations, uh, basically bringing creativity to life. I was always interested in flight, in nature, in the outdoors, and this developed into a, an appreciation for um, sustainability and elegance and efficiency. And uh, growing up, I played all sorts of sports, whether it's rugby or rock climbing or inner tube water polo or speed skating. And the thing is, you, you don't know what's going to stick and what's not or where any of it's going to lead. When we challenge ourselves in our hobbies and everything that we do, we start to figure out what we're good at and what we're not. And we start to figure out what we like and what we don't. And slowly, slowly we start to figure out what we really, really love. So when I was growing up, I also liked being out in nature, whether I was climbing up and falling down rock faces or hanging out on my grandfather's boat. I also really liked taking designs and making them real in a hands-on fashion, whether this was a carpentry summer job or building robotics projects in school. My passion, I discovered, was the kind of work that combines all of these diverse interests. And that was the biggest takeaway in the human-powered ornithopter project from us. We had found a project that combined all of our interests and turned it into a passion, combined athleticism and aviation and nature in the form of bird flight. And the discovery of this passion on this endeavor was a great journey of discovery for us. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Don't point that so, at me. <laughs> yeah. So once you have your passion and you know your direction, you need to find out how you take that thing that you love and how you carry it forward in your everyday life. Your path is the route that you will find that will help you make the greatest contribution to society and really make an impact. Whether you want to plan far ahead and identify your end goal and move towards it, this is a great trajectory, whether you want to be a brain surgeon or a professional athlete like the world's fastest person, or if you want to be a rock star with crazy hair, you can figure out your goal and plan for it far ahead of time. 
Understanding and having a good vision for your end goal is not necessarily the only path to living with passion. Uh, believe it or not, 10 years ago, Cam and I didn't actually plan to be building human-powered helicopters for a living. Uh, instead, our path developed much more organically. So as Cameron said, the Ornithopter brought together a lot of our passions in one really amazing project. After that, Cam went on to work in industry, and I was finishing up my PhD, but it wasn't too long before we were struck uh, by another itch. And in taking on the human-powered helicopter project, this wasn't just us challenging ourselves or taking on another cool technological challenge. For us, we were challenging ourselves to try to start up a career doing something that we really love. And I want to make one point really clear. I am not saying that everyone needs to be taking on massive, ambitious projects. Not at all. What I am saying is that there is something out there for everyone here that will take your unique talents and your unique passions and use them to their full potential. But it's going to be work to find that. So on the subject of work, of course, as soon as you make it a job or a career, you have to figure out a way to make at least some sort of paycheck. And, uh, and there's still definitely lots of traditional funding available for good ideas, but the, the world, the small business world is changing so fast, and it's really exciting now to be able to, there's all these different, uh, different ways, new creative methods for raising money, whether it's crowdsource funding on Kickstarter or YouTube advertising revenues, it's a really exciting world out there for people with exciting ideas. So this sounds really fantastic. Uh, we found a job that combines all of our passions, uh, but the truth is, we really haven't figured it all out. We, I mean, first, we're not necessarily swimming in money just yet. Um, but more than that, more importantly, is that we've taken all of our hobbies and we've turned them into a job. And that can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. And it has been a very difficult year. But this is our next big challenge, to figure out, to analyze what we're doing, figure out how we can continue to do the stuff that we love to do, and eliminate or outsource the stuff that we don't love to do and try to figure out how to live a balanced life and how to sustain this passion. So in looking towards your path, let passion guide you. Move confidently in the direction of your dreams, accepting that you may not understand exactly where they'll lead. Challenge yourself to understand yourself, to understand how you fit in and how your unique talents can be used as a force of good in this world. So go challenge yourself explore, and discover. Thank you.